pleased to have right here in the studio a fascinating individual whose story, uh, if you don't already know, you're going to love to hear right now. Uh, Nate Boyer, good to see you, sir. Yeah, you too. Appreciate it. So you. where do I start with you, Nate? You tell me where to start. It's your show. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I guess, let, let's put it this way. When did you first decide to serve uh, the United States uh, as a member of the Army or with, with, with whatever you wanted it to become? Well, honestly, I didn't... Uh... I mean, right after 9-11, you know, which affected everybody in, in different ways, but uh, I didn't sign up right away, but that definitely, you know, got me thinking kind of in a different, in a different light. Um, you know, I grew up with, you know, with a great family and offered every, every, everything I could, a kid could want, you know, mm -hmm. every opportunity. And, uh, but, I, you know, as I went on with life, I didn't, I didn't go to college. I, I didn't feel it was the right time for me and did a bunch of other random things like, work on fishing boats and this and that. And uh, I, I eventually just, I, I don't know. I mean, after, after that happened, I realized that there was, there was something, I guess, not right with the world. And I finally realized how fortunate we are to have everything that we have. And, uh, and I, I just, I don't know. I guess I was, I, I was spoiled in a way because I was so lucky just to have all, you know, all those opportunities. So... Uh, I went overseas, uh, and I went to the Darfur in Africa and did some relief work for a little while, and the way they viewed Americans and, and looked at us, and, and they were so blown away that an American would come and, mm -hmm. and, you know, volunteer and help them out, and I came back with this newfound, like, patriotism, you know, and uh, I, I went straight, you know, straight to the recruiter and told him I wanted to, I wanted to be in the Special Forces. And, and, and you became a Green Beret. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, yeah. And, yeah. and, and so at what point... Did you, uh, at what point did you realize that you wanted to play football as well? When did that finally hit you to, Nate, in the middle of being a Green Beret? Yeah. You were over in the Afghanistan theater, correct? I was in Iraq at that time. In Iraq yeah, at yeah. that time. Mm -hmm. So this was Iraq. Yeah. And then you eventually served in Afghanistan as well. Absolutely. At what point did you realize, you know what, I, I'd also like to follow a dream of, of playing football? Yeah, I mean... First of all, it was something I never did. I, I never, I'd never played before. You know, I didn't play in high school. I didn't play when I was younger, and I just regretted that, you know? And regret's probably the only thing that I'm afraid of. And uh, I was over there, I was in Iraq, and you know, a, a common uh, pastime we have is, uh, is watching football. You know, you get back from a mission, sometimes three, five in the morning, we're nine hours ahead over there, you know? And it's like college football's on, or the, or the NFL games on Saturdays and Sundays, and you know, I would, go right into uh, to watching games. And so it's just so like, you're back at home, if right, you're back at your right. home base at 5 in the morning. Yeah. Uh, fre fresh off of, uh, I guess, <laughs> ha putting your life on the line. Seriously? Like, yeah, like a, yeah, you've been involved absolutely. in a firefight, you come home, and now y you flip on the TV and you're watching football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember, like, riding, taking the Humvees back into to base from whatever we got into, and, you know, I'm chewing on my beef jerky, sitting on the gun, and, you know, I'm focused, but I'm like, I can't wait till we get back because... You know, I know Notre Dame is playing no whoever. And yeah, so. So at that point in time, you realized you had an itch to play football yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, t I was 29 at the time, and it was definitely like a now or never moment for me. 29, and, sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that, that's at that point that you went and, and went back to school? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So how, I, did that, how did that work? So yeah. I got done, got back from the deployment. I still had uh, about nine more months. I did one more trip to Israel, um, and... Yeah, I, the, Texas was the only place I applied um, just because of the history. And, you know, Coach Brown had, had gone on this USO tour that I'd heard about, and I thought that was amazing. And everyone was like, oh, he was the best. And, you know, soldiers, like, the Longhorn, you see that Longhorn symbol more than anything overseas. Is that how so? Why it's that? just like, it's like Mickey Mouse, you know? I mean, that's, uh, that's what everybody loves. That's everybody's, uh, it's like a, kind of America's team in a way. And uh, I'm sure a lot of soldiers will argue with me because everyone's got their allegiance. But, sure, of course, yeah. But uh, it, was the most, it was the most popular. And, I mean, there's so many soldiers from the state of Texas. And so I just thought that was a, that was a really cool deal. I didn't grow up a Texas fan or anything. But, uh, You're from the Bay Area. I'm from the Bay Area, okay. yeah. Okay, uh -huh. But I've been, I've been to Austin, which is, I'm sure you've been to Austin. Sure, it's, it's an incredible city. It's awesome. An incredible yeah. campus, obviously. And then so, you, but the, through the GI Bill is where mm -hmm. you got uh, into school there. Yeah, yeah, I got into Texas. the GI Bill. I was fortunate enough to eventually earn a scholarship. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I walked on as a safety, uh, just because I was like, I don't know, I, I'm about that size. Well, you know? what is your, your 5'11", right? Is yeah, what okay? yeah. I mean, at the time I was like, when I was in the army, I was about 160, 165. And, uh, like right now I'm about 220. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a little different yeah. body type. <laughs> sure. So you walk but. on to Texas as a safety. Right. And then eventually as we come back in 60 seconds with Nate Boyer, the, 
he becomes a long snapper, as well as continuing serving the country. And I want to get into this before we figure out how we get you in the NFL. Okay? Okay. Nate, uh, <laughs> Nate Boyer is here, Green Beret, uh, Texas Longhorn graduate, is here on the Rich Eisen Show, trying to get into the National Football League as a long snapper at age 34. Right 34? here on the Rich Eisen Show, 34. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. I'm here with Green Beret, because um, there's no such thing as a former Green Beret, correct? Sure. Right, okay, I'll take that, wait. I'll take that as a yes. Uh, Nate Boyer is here, uh, walk on, you walked on to Texas as a safety, a 29-year-old safety. Right. What did Mac Brown say to you when you walked in to his door saying, hey, I've been serving in Iraq, Afghanistan, Green Beret, I want to play for you. What did he say to you? I mean, you know, when I, I was on the scout team for that first year. Okay. So, I mean, I think he appreciated the fact that I was just, just wanted to be part of the team and I wanted to help out any way I could. And, uh, you know, I, I was fortunate enough, we were, we, were, we were beating the hell out of somebody. Mm -hmm. Later in the season, they put me in on a kickoff, you know, and, and it was awesome. You know, that was my first career play. What'd you do in, in the football. kickoff? What'd you do? Uh, I, I honestly got double teamed. Okay. But uh, it ended with one of them on their back. So Attaboy. I'm pretty sure it, it should have been a... Penalty, probably. <laughs> I did some sort of a throw, but whatever, you know. Well, at it least was far enough away from the tackle, it didn't matter. That a boy. Um, so then, where did long snapping come from? Where did this happen? So I mean, that that was a that was an opening I noticed that, that we would need for the next season. Um, our starter was graduating, mm -hmm. and the backup was graduating, and, and I know they you know recruited some people and had other guys that can do it, but I wanted to play. I wanted to get on the field, um, and so you know I, I'm not I'm not a four four guy, you know, like you. Thank you, sir. Uh, but I, I mean, I don't run that. in a suit. Nice. So it's a. Uh, <laughs> I know. But I mean, I, I so, you know, I realize the reality of the situation is if I'm going to play, I'm going to have to find a niche that I'm good at, and and, um, and I figured I could try at least to long snap. You know, I, I played baseball, so I was a pitcher and I had a decent arm, and I just started messing around with it, and I was just watching YouTube videos and just tweaking it and messing with it, and I sucked for a long time. You okay. Know? And then I went overseas and just worked on it all summer long. And I told Coach Brown before I left, like, you know, I'm going to come back and I want to be the snapper. You know? where, where overseas did you do it? Um, that first year was in, that was in Greece, actually. So you're still serving. Right, still serving. So I, can't, I went into the National Guard okay. after I was on active duty. I went into the National Guard while I went to Texas. So, so you're spending the so-called football offseason right, as, yeah. as an active member of the National Guard. Right. Yes, overseas. Yep. And at one point, were you in a serious... Yeah, Fire, so, firefighting theater. So in yeah, the that, off that, season? That, that summer I was not, but the next the next two summers, so 2013, 2014, I was in Afghanistan for about three and a half months, and uh, I mean I would go over there and uh, I would continue to train as far as my football stuff, but I mean it's a much bigger mission, uh, you know. Obviously. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, so you know that was another that was another issue with the weight thing for, for as far as football stuff because it's tough to <laughs> it's tough to keep your weight up over there if you're doing what we're doing. I mean, you go on one two day long mission sometimes and you're carrying all this stuff and you know you, you uh i mean you're 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 in a you're in a firefight or you're in whatever situation and you know you're hiking around and it's just yeah I'd so come you're, back <laughs> you're you're long snapping then you're firefighting it, well, you, you're in a firefight in Afghanistan. Right. I mean, we're training it, them, too. And right. No, I understand. Right. But what I'm just saying is that right. this is how you're spending your, your off seasons at, at the University of Texas as a long snapper. And now, so you are done with your, your duty with the National Guard, and you are done with University of Texas. Yeah, I got out of the National Guard on February 23rd. And so now you're, you have graduated day. from Austin. I'm finishing my master's right now. Okay. Yep. So now, where, where do you stand about long snapping in the National Football League? Where does that stand right now? So now? I've been training you know, in town here at, at Unbreakable Performance Center, which is Jay Glazer's oh, gym. Oh, Glaze is the man. He sure. is the man. Okay. And uh, it's been unbelievable. You know, I've, I've put on 25 pounds uh, in the last three months. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, had, I was fortunate enough to be able to play in an all-star game at the end of the year. And so I met some, with some scouts there and kind of, you know, I, I felt like I had a good opportunity. You know, if people can get over the fact that I'm 34, you know, get over it. I'm 34. Well, do you know, because uh, obviously you know long, some, some long snappers spend 20, 25 yeah. years in the league. I mean, I've, I'm not mistaken. And they one, date Pam Anderson, too. The, yeah, some of them do. Chargers, the Chargers long snapper for a long time. So where, where are the job openings? Do you know 
right now where the um, job openings would be? You could target yourself, I guess, as to which I jobs could. are open. I, I'm not really sure. Honestly, I mean, I can take 31 no's. I just need one team. To yeah, just, all it takes is one. Yes, you know, and, and it, I, don't, I don't care where it is. I play anywhere. For do you anybody. have an agent who's calling I these do. teams? I do. Okay, yep. and so what are, they, what, are they, what are they telling your agent, essentially? Um, well, I mean, right now, it's, you know, they just had the owners' meetings and all that stuff, yes. so it's going to be these next couple weeks kind of uh, to fi you know, figure all that out. I have a local tryout with the 49ers uh, on April 17th. Which is your, is that your hometown team? It is my hometown team, yeah. Oh, so, come on, man. <laughs> that's, well, that's good. So, yeah. so you have a long snapping tryout with the 49ers slated, right. and then there will be other teams that hope knock on your door, you can knock on them and say, look, I've... Look at this is my resume. I've got the heart. I've got the soul. I've got the heart of a of a patriot and a champion that beats inside. The patriot. Well, you could. <laughs> the, if if well, the Patriots. If I'm not mistaken, their longest tenure player is their long snapper. Is that correct, Brockman? Can you look that up? Uh, probably Tom Brady. Yeah. Well, it could be. <laughs> I don't know. Could be longer than Brady. You never know either. But you, who knows? That would be a good mix yeah. too. I, I wouldn't fight it. No, I'm sure you wouldn't. <laughs> so what what do you what do you hope? What, what would that mean to you, to be able to get to the National Football League I mean, and you, do this after all that you've obviously achieved, as you keep saying, for, for greater purpose, greater cause, greater thing for you to accomplish is what you've already done in many ways. What would it mean to you to, to essentially walk on into the National Football League and earn yourself a spot as a long snapper in the NFL, Nate Boyer? I, it would, it, it's really hard to put into words. It'd be indescribable. And... Uh, you know, not just for me, for, for the guys that I, that I fought with and the guys that paid the ultimate sacrifice and uh, the guys that are fighting today, w whether they're overseas or back home, you know, the, uh, the suicide rate among veterans is, is uncanny. 22, 22 a day are killed by suicide. And that's something that I'm very passionate about right now, about fixing. And uh, there's an organization called 22 Kill that I'm working with, that, uh, and that's what this ring's all about. Um, that's all about empowering veterans and, and getting past that. And I, I want to be able to show those guys that, look, I mean, no matter where you came from, or what happened to you or what you did, like, you can, you can literally do anything if you, just, if you just work harder than everybody else around you, you know. And uh, you already have, have sacrificed. You know how to do this, you know. So it's not, it's not it really just isn't about me. And I know people say that kind of thing. But I mean that. Like, it's not just about me. It's about so much more. And, uh, and so that would just, just, just to have, have a team or the league itself or whatever, uh, open the doors and say, look, besides all this, you know, the, on, the, on the paper, you know, you may not have the, what we're looking for, you know, as far as a, an NFL prospect, but you have those intangibles and we'll at least give you a shot, you know, and, and if it works out, God, I, I, I really can't put it into words. I don't know. Well, I hope you get it, Nate. I hope you get it, Matt. I hope you get it. And if there's anything I could do to help, you just let me know. Absolutely. You know, and, and hopefully being on this show will help. I know Dan Wetzel wrote an incredible story about you on Yahoo Sports. Hopefully there'll be other members of the media that are interested in your story because it's well-deserved. I appreciate that, Thank sir. you. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. No, thank you for everything that you do. Yeah. Thank, thank you. It's, my, it's our pleasure. You, <laughs> thank you. That's Nate Boyer. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.